。ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ。Good morning and welcome once again to Kahului Hanganji Buddhist Temple's Sunday YouTube service. And、uh, we're really happy to have you here. Joining us today. And、uh, today's service is for the 18th, April 18th, 2021. And today we are observing the memorial for Eshini and Kakushini. So, this is an observance to honor the, the wife, the spouse of Shinran Shonin,、uh, who was the founder of our Buddhist tradition, and also his daughter, Kakushini. So,、um, I'll tell you a little bit more about those during the Dharma,、uh, those, those two wonderful people during the Dharma message.、Um, Uh, right now, just explain、uh, the, the service,、uh, what, what we're going to do today. So, we've already had, heard the calling bell, the Kancho bell, calling us、uh, to mindfulness in, in during this service, to, to、uh, listen to the Dharma, to listen to the teaching.、Um, uh, after I uh, uh, finish these opening words, we will recite the homages. So, usually we have the Vandana T. Sarana, which is the、uh, three. Honoring the Buddha and the Buddha's enlightenment, and then、uh, reciting or chanting the three treasures. So, today,、um, instead of that, we will have the recitation of homages, which is a similar thing. It also is the three treasures. And、uh, following that, we will chant the Sutra, 12 homages, which is the English version of Juni Rai. So, Juni Rai is a kind of an interesting、um, uh, uh, sutra. <laughs> Can't find the words. <laughs> That's how you know you're getting older.、Um, and in Juni Rai, it,、um, it was uh, uh, attributed, it's a hymn. It's not actually a sutra uh, uh, from a sutra itself, but it's a, it's a hymn that was attributed to the great Buddhist philosopher Nagarjuna, and,、uh, who was very important in the history of every, almost every Buddhist tradition, especially in the uh, Mahayana uh, schools. But、um, it is.、Uh, Uh, a kind of a hymn that is in praise of Amida Buddha. So、uh, every, uh, nearly every verse has the phrase, I, I prostrate myself to the ground, I bow to the ground, and I worship or I honor Amida, the Holy One. And this expression of dedication reminds us of our commitment to the Buddha and to the Pure Land, the land of peace, where everyone attains their highest fulfillment, which is Buddhahood. So we will have the chanting of Juni Rai. Uh, in English. And、uh, following that, we will recite the Golden Chain of Love and then go on to、uh, chant the Metta, the Loving Kindness Meditation. And,、uh, oh, excuse me, in, after the Golden Chain of Love, we will have the Dharma message. I will share some thoughts about、uh, Eshini and, and、uh, Kakushini with you. And also,、uh, and also another great uh, 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 person in our、uh, Jodo Shinshu tradition、um, who had some wonderful things to say. She's not so long ago, just in the early 20th century. Her name was Lady Takeko Kujo. So we have basically, talk, I'm going to talk about three women today, and then、uh, in Buddhist women. And then,、uh, then we will have the metta, loving kindness meditation, and the singing of the Nembutsu, and then some closing words. Okay, so uh, please. Uh, Uh, sit back and enjoy the video.、Um, enjoy、uh, listening to the Dharma today. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Please join me now as we read the homages, taking refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Hard it is to be born into human life, now we are living in it. Difficult it is to hear the teachings of the Blessed One, now we hear them. If we do not gain emancipation in this present life, we may not be free from ill faring in the ocean of births and deaths for kalpas, endless ages. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures. We go to the Buddha for guidance. May we always walk in the way that leads to enlightenment. We go to the Dharma for guidance. May we be submerged in the depths of the teachings and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. We go to the Sangha for guidance. May we all, with one accord, live the life of harmony in the spirit of oneness, free from the bondage of selfishness. 
Even through myriads of kalpas, hard it is to hear such excellent and profound teachings. Now we are able to hear and receive them. Let us try to understand the Tathagata's teachings. Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Gods and men all bow in awe to Amida the revered in Buddha's wondrous pure land. Bodhisattvas gather round, golden form like the mountain king, steadfast like the elephant's pace. Buddha's eyes like the blue lotus, thus I bow to Amida. Buddha's form round like the moon, bright like thousand suns and moons. Buddha's voice like the nightingale, thus I bow to Amida. Buddha's figure on Kanon's crown, adorned with wondrous features. Buddha subdues evilness, thus I bow to Amida. Beyond compare Amida's pure, virtue shining clear like space. All benefit from Buddha, thus I bow to Amida. Bodhisattvas all renown, Maras to praise Amida. Primal vow made for our sake, thus I bow to Amida. Golden ponds where lotus bloom, towers a throne of goodness. Buddha lives like the mountain king, thus I bow to Amida. Bodhisattvas come afar, attaining true happiness. They revere the Buddha's face, thus I bow to Amida. All life changes like the dew, we have no permanent self. Buddha teaches this law to all, thus I bow to Amida. No evil in the pure land, and no fear of evil paths. Faithful hearts honor Buddha, thus I bow to Amida. Saving us through many ways, no tempters, no evil friends. Birth leads to enlightenment. Thus I bow to Amida. Amida, thus I have praised virtues boundless like the sea. These virtues shared with others for birth into the pure land. No. Of Amida's vow 
is shared equally by all, together attaining awakened mind. We are born in the land of peace. Namo Amida Butsu, 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 Namo Amida Butsu. Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now, depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. 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 Namo Amida <clears throat> Welcome again. I'd like to share some thoughts about uh, the Buddha's teaching with you, some reflections, and um, um, talk a little bit about Eshini and Kakushini, uh, wh who's, who we are uh, celebrating or uh, remembering today. Um, <clears throat> but let's begin by putting our hands together and, uh, and reciting the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. <clears throat> well, Eshini is a very interesting person. Um, we don't know a whole lot about her, but what we do know is very interesting. She was the wife of Shinran, and um, this uh, picture of her. I'll put it on the I'll put it on the screen for you uh, so you can see it better. Um, uh, this book, by the way, is by James Dobbins, who is a great scholar of that uh, medieval. Uh, Japanese Buddhism, so uh, especially Jodo Shinshu. So he wrote, um, he wrote a very uh, important uh, one-volume history about Jodo Shinshu, and then uh, also and then this book about uh, Ashini Shinran's wife. Um, so I just want to share a few things from this book, actually, with you to begin with. Um, we know that she was born in 1182 uh, of the Common Era, as we say, and. Uh, and she passed away about 1268. That's an uncertain date, but uh, close to that. And um, she's and and she's called uh, a nun. The ni at the end of her name, Eshi ni, and likewise her daughter Kakushi ni, uh, is, uh, means that she was uh, a monk, a nun, a female monk, or uh, considered herself that she lived the spiritual life of a, of, a, of a nun. Um, and just like in the case of, of men, the, the, the ending of the name would be Bo, uh, B-O, uh, which would um, uh, all represent that the person was a, was a monk. But um, <coughs> she um, uh, is, ver we know very little about her actually. And interestingly, um, uh, th there's just not much written about her. In fact, only because her letters, and this book is basically focused on her letters, the letters of the nun Eshini, um, only because of her le her letters that we we have some um, uh, voice, some of her voice coming down to us. Um, and these letters were found in 1921 in the archive of uh, Hanganji, so they were kind of lost for centuries. And uh, there was really not not a lot of uh, independent um, um, materials that. Uh, uh, referred to her. Even Shinran didn't mention her much, I mean, at least in this, the writings that have come down to us. Uh, he was usually writing about doctrine, so he not, too, not really biographical. He didn't write much about himself either. But he does, does mention, uh, he does call her a nun, your mother and nun, uh, when he was writing a letter to uh, one of his sons. 
So um, what's really um, important in regard to Shinran and the, the, the teaching that he brought um, forward and that he shared and brought forward in the world is, um, you know, that um, he, in meeting Eshini, which he probably met while he was on, uh, in exile in Echigo province, um, he had uh, been part of the group of, uh, of a sort of, you might say, we might say, kind of renegade, Pure Land Buddhist uh, Nembutsu uh, followers of, of Honen, who, uh, who uh, Chidran always considered his great teacher. And um, Honen, <coughs> uh, and because uh, Honen's teaching was a kind of a threat not really a threat, but you know, it, it, it appeared to be a threat to the uh, powers that be of the time, the religious establishment, the organization, and, uh, and the uh, state uh, who saw these uh, um, independent, um, you know, uh, 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 religious people um, basically saying that, you know, that Amida saves you just as you are kind of thing means you don't have to go through the, the, the official the official channels and be uh, approved and corroborated by 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 official uh, 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 authority. So they were a kind of a, as it is, is always the case, you know, uh, religions, new religious ideas are always a bit of a threat to the status quo. So that's what happened. But Shinran <coughs> and all of Honen's students found themselves in exile to various far-flung places in, in the Japanese islands, and uh, Shinran as well. So most of them had been monks, but here they were now out in the country, you know, no, visible, no means of support and so on. But the people, uh, the local people, tended to take them to heart and uh, appreciate them. Uh, so Shinran met somehow Ashini in this um, uh, far-flung place, and he um, uh, gave up being uh, a celibate monk and he, mar and he got married and took up the ordinary life. And this really went along with and perhaps actually helped to, you know, give a, a substance to or uh, help to him to understand the Nembutsu teaching that it was for ordinary people that just as you are, so you don't have to take on aesthetic or ascetic practices and and uh, difficult practices that uh, really Shinran came to understand only only make your ego ego grow larger rather than rather than uh, make make us more hum humble and more uh, uh, um, self aware. So we tend to um, uh, when we take on these hard practices, we tend to be sort of of uh, proud of ourselves for oh I, for meditating so long, you know, all those kinds of things, fasting, uh, whatever it is. So, uh, but Ashini was very important to Shinran a, as uh, he was to her. And in fact, we have from her writings, from her letters, we have this information, uh, we have this, her, her, her story that she saw uh, Shinran as a um, manifestation of the Bodhisattva Kanon. And she herself saw uh, he, he, we know from other sources that he saw her as a manifestation of the Bodhisattva Kanon. So Kanon is the Bodhisattva of um, compassion. And so uh, knowing, uh, realizing this, you know, that, that, that's a really, really kind of amazing uh, way for a, they never told each other, by the way. They never said, oh, I, I think of you as Bodhisattva Kanon or, you know, they never said that. Uh, uh, we just know that she thought that and, and he thought that. So um, it, it, it's very interesting. I mean, if you, if that the, they, they must have had a wonderful relationship. But um, anyway, what happened was in the later time, later uh, period of Shinran's life, after his exile was, was over, um, he, he had uh, uh, raised children and so on, and, and they, they'd spent a lot, many years on the, you know, teaching the Nembutsu, sharing it in, in different places. But, um, and so he never went back to, uh, when, the, when, when the exile was, was uh, rescinded, you know, he never went back and became a monk again. He just 
kept doing what he was doing with Eshini, but uh, sharing the Nembutsu. But when um, uh, uh, the exa at a certain point he did go back to Kyoto in order to work on his, 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 his writings, to have the time and also the books available. Because remember, in those days, you didn't have public libraries all over the place. And you couldn't, he needed to access to the sutras and different uh, writings. And that, for that, he had to go to Kyoto. So he spent um, the remaining years of his life, about three decades, in Kyoto. And his daughter stayed with him and took care of him, his daughter Kakushini. And, uh, uh, Eshini, his wife, remained in Echigo, um, taking care of, I guess, the family farm. Her f the, uh, from her family, I guess, she had a, some kind of an estate or farm, uh, and she took care of that. Um, from her letters, we get the idea that she, they, she was pretty poor at that time, but she, she basically took care of, which, uh, of, of that, what, what she could, and I guess sent money to help support Shinran in, in Kyoto. And her letters were, were basically written to her daughter, Kakushini. Uh, so that's uh, this wonderful, uh, uh, actually it's one-sided. We don't have her letters, but we have Kakushini's letters, but we have Eshini's letters. So uh, uh, her, what she shared with her daughter during those remaining years of her life, about the last decade of her life is when she wrote them. And um, so I would like to, um, let's see, the couple parts that I'd like to read to you, um, and um, well she does describe the dream that she had that uh, where she saw Shinran as a bodhisattva, um, kind of long, so I won't, um, uh, won't, won't, uh, um, cannot read that right now, but um, uh, let's see, um, but uh, one story I would like to tell you is that uh, she relates the time when Shinran was very ill. And um, uh, he began to, uh, during that illness, um, he began to chant the sutras, the Pure Land sutras, uh, the, or, or actually just the one, the larger sutra, which is a really big sutra. And with the idea is that if you, you know, if you're sick or if you're trying to get some, to to maybe bring. Uh, there was another occasion also when she, he did this. Um, he chanted the the Pure Land sutra to. Um, to help because there was a famine and he wanted to, to help people so he was a way of praying for, for others but uh, then he stopped because he realized that that was uh, uh, not trusting Amida to say well you know I was going to do this as if a kind of magic and this magic will make something happen the way I want it to happen not really knowing what is the best thing so Shinran was sick and he his natural instinct um, was to chant uh, uh, the, the sutra. And he knew the sutra so well that when he closed his eyes, when he was uh, sick, he could see the letters of the sutra brilliantly illuminated uh, in his mind. And, uh, and then he, but he realized this chanting is actually senseless. And he said, I thought, for outside of faith, the faith that comes with the nembutsu, what is it that should command my attention so? So I'm spending all my time just focusing on repeating these words that are written in, in the scrolls of the sutra. As I carefully reflected on this, Shinran said, I recalled a time 17 or 18 years er, uh, earlier when I set out to chant the three Pure Land Sutras faithfully a thousand times for the benefit of all sentient beings. Then, wondering what this was for, I brought to mind the, this verse, and, and, uh, and then he tells us the verse that he brought to mind. To have faith oneself and to cause others to have faith is by far the most difficult among all difficult things. To have faith oneself and to cause others to have faith is truly the way to respond to one's indebtedness to the Buddha. With faith, with faith in this, what outside of the Nembutsu could possibly be lacking that would make one feel the need to chant the sutras. So he's saying, I don't need to chant the sutras, just to have faith oneself and to share that faith, to cause others, to be the cause of others having faith. That's the most important thing to do. And um, he reflect, and he said, having reflected on this, I didn't continue to chant them. Because of that experience, should there still remain even one bit of that desire to chant the sutras um, 
uh, now, should it, even though I'm sick, he's saying, one should ponder well the attachments of human beings and the faith they have in their own power. So chanting the sutra in order to get well or to help other beings is faith in one's own power rather than faith in other power, the power of boundless compassion, which is Amida Buddha. So um, that is a very uh, uh, important rem uh, remembrance that that Ashini records in that letter. Um, just one other thing I'd like to share with you. Um, um, the um, mo much of her letters, and I, I, I'd, al I'd also like to just make a little context and say that uh, to tell you that um, you know this is an important voice that we have in Ashini. Um, we don't have the voices of many women from early Buddhism, or either early or medieval Buddhism, or any anything up until the modern times. Um, women were, because of the cultural attachments of most of these ancient societies, um, <laughs> which actually come down to us today, still exist very strongly. Uh, uh, women were not taken as seriously as as men, and uh, in fact, in in Buddhism, I mean, it's more it's more cultural than anything else. But Buddhism, until until modern times, has never really denied or um, uh, never really um, put that right the the the, the false belief that um, women cannot attain enlightenment, that they have to be be born as a man first, you know. So you have to, if you're a woman, you have to just do, you know, follow Buddhism so in your next life you can become a man and then you can become, go on to becoming enlightened and becoming Buddha. Well, um, that was something that the Buddha said was not true, but, you know, we don't tend to listen to the religious uh, the, the teachers in the first place. We sort of, the, we start with them and then it kind of grows according to people's uh, biases and, and uh selfish ideas, but um, uh, so to have a voice of a, of a medieval Buddhist woman, uh, very devout and uh, with very strong ideas, I think is, is important, although unfortunately we don't have much, but we have these few letters. Um, and, but they're also filled with a lot of, uh, of uh, warmth and affection, and she's writing to her daughter, and in one l letter she says, uh, and remember, she never, probably never sees her again. Um, they've been apart for a long time, and it's a long journey to Kyoto. And so she's writing, and she says, Since you are my youngest child, I have always thought of you as dearest, but it will not be possible for me to see you. So, um, but, but it will not be possible for me to see you, so it would be truly heartbreaking for me never even to hear from you. So she's saying, please write, please write. It's heartbreaking if I don't even hear from you. Um, and uh, what you get in Ashini's letters also is a kind of a, a, a view of a, of a woman's world, um, a world of warmth and affection and kindness and love. And uh, so the last thing I wanted to share, a lot of times, um, again, I mentioned that um, um, people, um, uh, uh, Buddhists, m largely in the Buddhist, in, in these Buddhist uh, writings and so on, when they do talk about women, they, they, they say that uh, women are not, uh, uh, cannot be enlightened as they are. They have to become man, uh, be born as a man. Ra a false idea that Buddha didn't teach, but that, that's what happened. Well, and there was even a kind of a belief um, uh, that, uh, because of that belief, even in the Pure Land tradition, which was really very egalitarian and, and, and believed in equality, that everyone can be born in the Pure Land. Nevertheless, they, whoever wrote those sutras, how they came to be, felt that they needed to accommodate that idea in some way. And they said that, that uh, when you're born, in, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be born another, uh, in another human life. When you're born in the Pure Land, you're automatically transformed into a man. So there, that, th th that was meant to sort of overcome that prejudice, but of course it, it also tends to, <laughs> it also kind of uh, um, uh, uh, keeps it going at the same time. But uh, when we, so we might want to, uh, we might ask what did women really think? Did they feel that when they were, uh, if they had that belief that when I die I'm going to be born in the Pure Land, did they believe um, uh, that they were going to be born there as a man, you know, as a, as a male, right? And uh, uh, so 
listen to what Chin, uh, what Eshini says in, in her letter. Um, she, uh, she says, I will be very glad to hear what your children are doing. He's, she's writing to Kakushini again, who's taking care of Shinran. I especially want to hear about your eldest child. I wish uh, there could be more time for me to see you and for you to see me while I am now in this world. But, she says, I myself will be going to the Pure Land very soon. There, everything can be seen without any darkness. So be sure to say, she's telling her daughter, be sure to say the Nembutsu and come to, see, and come to the Paradise, the Pure Land, to be with me. Indeed, when we go to the Pure Land and meet again, nothing whatsoever will be in darkness. So, she also mentions a neighbor, um, uh, a friend that, that I, um, uh, I guess is in Kyoto, and she says, um, uh, she says, also Lady Wakasa must now be, uh, be gentle in her old age. I think of her with true fondness. She should be sure to say the Nembutsu and come to the Pure Land to be with us. So she's telling her daughter, you know, be sure to say the Nembutsu and so that you know, when we all die, uh, we'll all meet again in the Pure Land. So it, clearly she believes, uh, she is saying that we are going to meet in the Pure Land as we are, uh, as women, as, uh, 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 just as we are, the people that we will know, we will know one another. And um, of course, whether, however we look at the Pure Land, w whether it's a literal place, um, uh, of course, in, Bud in, in Buddhism, the Pure Land really is a kind of a way of talking about enlightenment and talking about this life as well, how we see our living uh, in this world, um, uh, to be in this world of samsara and yet simultaneously to dwell in the Pure Land, to be born in the Pure Land, is uh, um, uh, you know, one of the very paradoxical and difficult to grasp ideas in Buddhism, but uh, um, th this is the, the important thing uh, this is a uh, more of a sophisticated idea, but for a simple uh, a simple expression of affection, Ashini is telling her daughter, you know, we'll meet again. I'll see you there. I can't see you now, but I'll see you there. She's not thinking she's gonna. She's not saying she's gonna see her daughter as a man in the Pure Land. She's gonna see her daughter in the Pure Land, and her friend. Yeah. So um, that is a wonderful kind of direct. Uh, voice and vision of, an, of someone who, uh, not a scholar, not a Buddhist scholar like Shinran, um, but uh, a, a, a direct expression of the heart. Uh, and um, it shows us, I think, it gives us a, 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 a deeper understanding of, of what, what it really means to be born in the Pure Land and, and what the life of Nembutsu is really about. Um, and now to jump ahead a number of centuries, to 1887, um, Lady Takeko Kujo uh, is another voice of a woman in Buddhism, um, and a uh, very beautiful voice. She was the daughter of one of our, uh, uh, of, our of the abbots of Honganji, and um, she um, uh, was also known for having being the founder of what's now called the Buddhist Women's Association. Um, in, in 1907, and uh, I think it is, she, oh, 190, 1904, so one of the founders of, of the Buddhist Women's Association. Um, and uh, in, in, in those days it was uh, um, begun to help uh, with many of the people who were uh, sick and suffering. Um, uh, so she, it, it, was, it had a social purpose. But um, she had a very beautiful uh, understanding of Buddhism. And um, I'd like to share with you, just as a kind of a closing of my talk today, and from a little bit more of a modern perspective, or I don't know if I would say modern, but a more recent perspective, uh, I'd like to um, share a couple of her words. Um, so here. I'm going to a little, this book, by the way, is, is a translation of her writings, uh, some of her writings, uh, and um, it was uh, translated by Wayne Yokoyama, and I'll put a picture up uh, in, on the screen for you to see. Uh, okay, 
This passage is called The Heart of a Child. When a baby suckles, cradled at its mother's breast, it has not even the least bit of fear. Everything is taken care of. The grandeur and grace of motherly love fills, fills the child's world. We can only bow in reverence. Although we too are being cradled, in ignorance we rebel against the greater hands supporting our life. Although we too are being cradled, most of us still have troubles and woes. When we live in the glorious light of compassion and realize how very small we are, we can live at peace with ourselves like a child with an innocent heart. When we put our lives in the hands of great compassion, it is due to our earnest wish to be nurtured by infinite life. The beautiful world of faith exists where the mind of doubt is discarded and everything is taken care of. So. I have another reading I'd like to share with you, another passage. I think that speaks for itself. That passage, uh, I think it makes it's very clear what she's trying to say. You know, just as a child feels perfectly safe, uh, cradled in its mother's arms, uh, we, we don't realize that we too are cradled by uh, all the conditions that make our life possible. And of course life is hard, you know, uh, it's not meant to deny that what she's saying she's tell, but she's telling us to look at what our life really is look at what your life really is this life we are able to have at this moment because of so many other beings which have which have worked together to make this moment possible to make my existence possible so it's a very important thing and that's what faith is to realize that um, Uh, let's see, so this is a little bit of um, how, how we should act toward others. It's called acting out. It is unacceptable to act out when we cannot get what we want by asking. People these days cannot understand how other people feel. We do not mutually engage each other heart to heart. Instead, we resort to acting out. Isn't this obsession with drama the reason we are full of regrets and worries? If we would honestly express ourselves to everyone, the need for useless drama would disappear. However many people, even while recognizing this annoying problem, choose to think small and keep up appearances. It is lonely to be out of touch with other people's feelings, but people prefer to protect their unflattering appearances. We lack the heart to think things over and to ask forgiveness. Well, I think that speaks directly to us and uh, resonates with things that are going on in the world today very deeply. Uh, of course, there are people, when we say acting out, it's probably much worse today the way people are acting out, often very violently, and um, violent conditions all over the world, horrible brutality that's becoming nor the norm to the extent that we just shrug our shoulders and accept it. But. I think this is uh, so much the important part of the having the woman's voice, the woman's view, uh, to to remind us uh, how important it is this heart-to-heart -heart connection we need to have with one another. It's the only way we cannot we cannot solve these problems to, in the world today. Um, the terrible problems that are so disheartening and demoralizing, and kind of make you just give up and pretend they don't exist. But of course they do exist. If we think about what's going on in so many places in the world, including our own country, how many shootings have there been recently? And then the terrible oppression of people in places like Myanmar and on and on, you know. Uh, not necessary. It's not necessary. It's not just the way things are. It's not just that's how politics is and so on. Or it's the game, the game of power and all those things. It is. It is, of course, but um, it, it, it needn't, it shouldn't be that way, and, and it, it's a hor horrifically shameful, uh, 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 something we all carry to real, to, that these things continue to be this way and continue even to get worse. I could even, I would also mention our treatment of the environment and how much we're uh, 
just uh, casually uh, allowing the earth to be destroyed. One more, <coughs> one more reading, and then we'll end our talk today. This is called Gasho from the Heart, and I think it makes a very nice ending. Trapped in a world of chaotic change, we seek an eternal, unchanging existence. There is nothing to rely on in this fleeting world. Everything here is transient. There is not a thing to be proud of in this worldly life where our karmic conditions dictate that we spend our lives chasing after illusions. Sadly, we try to hide our spiritual poverty by wrapping ourselves in the finery of grand illusions. Exhausted, we must walk a dark path of suffering that stretches endlessly into the distance. How sorry I feel for people caught in this state. But when we open, openly lament the way we are, when we humbly place our hands in gasho from the heart, we will clearly see the bright torch raised high for lost and deluded seekers to gaze upon. And with that, I'd like to uh, close this, these reflections today. And would you please join me in gasho as we recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo.
Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's service and learned something um, for yourself. Uh, we are able to take something away uh, with you from this experience of um, not just listening, not so much listening to me, but um, listening together with others and reflecting on your own life. That's where we learn f from our reflections on our own life, our own self, looking deeply within ourselves. Um, uh, sometimes you might hear the wrong thing or the right thing, but if it causes us to see ourselves more honestly, that's the most important thing. The journey that we're on is a journey of self-discovery and, in a sense, regeneration, um, being born into a, a, a truer reality than the reality of our everyday sort of rote existence, habitual existence. That's kind of at the heart of uh, what Buddhism really is about, waking up, waking up. So thank you so much for being here. Um, one announcement is that uh, if you didn't uh, um, have a chance to see the, the Central Maui Hanamatsuri video last week, or even if you did, um, it's still up, by the way. It's at Wailuku Honganji uh, um, YouTube channel, and uh, um, you can watch it over there. That uh, We all participated in that, all the uh, um, Central Maui Buddhist temples, uh, most of us anyway. And, um, uh, and uh, if you saw that, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen it yet, uh, get, uh, take a look at it. Um, but um, we will also be having uh, Kahui Honganji uh, Hanamatsuri service next week, April 25th, here in the temple, in-person service. We are limited because of social distancing, so if you are interested in attending, uh, please uh, uh, give us a call, give the temple a call, so that we can uh, have a count. We're only, we, can, we have a limited number of people that can fit in here with the distancing. Um, and we have other restrictions too, so uh, we have to, uh, to, to do that. So just so you, so you know, it, don't just uh, necessarily drop in, because uh, uh, we may not have room but <laughs> uh, for everybody, so that way. So please do call. We will be having a Hanami Do, the little, the uh, 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 house with the baby Buddha, and you can pour the sweet tea on the Buddha uh, and uh, express uh, appreciation for the Buddha's teachings. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, take a look at the scrolling text afterwards. There may be some other announcements in there. Uh, so please have a great week. Thank you. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida. Thank you.